Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be talking about Donald Trump and his lawyer, Alina Hoppe, being sanctioned by a federal judge for bringing a frivolous lawsuit against Hillary Clinton, Fusion GPS, the DNC, and a whole bunch of other people individually and as a whole for what he called a RICO enterprise, a racketeering enterprise against him regarding the Russia investigation and the Russia collusion narrative that was uh, prevalent in the uh, in the Democratic Party from, I would say, 20, the end of 2016 to 2020. And even now, there are some people who believe it, despite the fact that Mueller found no evidence that Trump actually criminally colluded with uh, Putin, a conspiracy. Uh, he found no evidence of that. But nevertheless, there are some people who still think that there's something there. I never bought into that conspiracy theory because I don't buy into QAnon, I don't buy into right-wing conspiracy, and I don't buy into left-wing conspiracies, okay? You see what you've done now? I'm going to have to listen to conspiracy theories the rest of the evening. The reason that Trump was so nice to Putin is because he likes him. He wants to be authoritarian in this country, but the Constitution and our law prevents it. Putin basically does whatever he wants in his country, especially in the big cities and in the capital. He has a lot of control. So it's true that he has um, something akin to a dictatorship over there. Not, not necessarily directly because the Duma still exists, but he has a lot of control over the lawmakers and they're afraid of him. Okay, As we saw with the Ukraine invasion, and even there, his military leaders are afraid of him. So, um, so yeah, the reason that people thought that there was some kind of uh, collusion going on is because of how nice Putin was. He kept agreeing with Putin and and disagreeing with our intelligence, things like that. So people took that to to. Uh, weave this idea that he was working with Putin. Turns out that's not true. So on that particular conspiracy theory, Trump has been exonerated. Uh, he's done many other crimes, including committing treason on January 6th. So people should focus more on that and forget about Russia. I would prefer people focus on the factual allegations against Trump instead of fairy tales like Russiagate. Regardless of my massive disagreements with the people who push Russiagate, that's still not a racketeering enterprise to destroy your name and reputation, Okay, which is what he claimed in this lawsuit. All these people had an idea that you were working secretly with Putin, and that was their opinion, okay? As wrong as it might have been, it is not defamation, and it certainly doesn't rise to the level of racketeering enterprise, which is what he tried to claim. And that's why the judge dismissed this case, because it doesn't rise to the level of a racketeering enterprise, which is a very serious legal standard that you have to meet, and they didn't meet it. That's why the judge dismissed the case as frivolous. OK, so let's take a look at what happened here. A federal judge on Thursday imposed nearly one million dollars in sanctions on former President Donald Trump and his lawyer for filing a since dismissed frivolous lawsuit against Hillary Clinton and many others, which had claimed they tried to rig the 2016 presidential election in her favor by smearing Trump. The judge said the following in the intro to the case. This case should never have been brought. Its inadequacy as a legal claim was evident from the start. No reason reasonable lawyer would have filed it. That's why Alina Haba has to pay as well. Intended for a political purpose, none of the counts of the amended complaint stated a cognizable legal claim. 31 individuals and entities were needlessly harmed in order to dishonestly advance a political narrative. A continuing pattern of misuse of the courts by Mr. Trump and his lawyers undermines the rule of law portrays judges as partisans and diverts resources from those who have suffered actual legal harm. I previously granted defendant Charles Dolan's motion for sanctions brought pursuant to Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 11. Now before me is a motion for seeking sanctions brought by 18 other defendants. Upon consideration of the motion, response and reply for the reasons that follow and also for those stated in my previous order, sanctions are awarded. So this is a breakdown of the sanctions. It's basically almost a million dollars that Trump and his lawyer has to pay here. Specifically, Trump and his lawyers have to pay $937,989.39. Okay. Specifically, when it comes to Hillary Clinton, they have to pay her $171,000. For the DNC and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, they have to pay $179,685. And for Robbie Mook, $70,000 thereabouts, Fusion GPS $55,820, Bruce and Nelly Orr um, $59,000 and so on and so forth. You guys can see the rest there. So these are the amounts that they have to pay. Altogether, it comes to about a million dollars. The judge in question here is John Middlebrook in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida. And here are a couple more quotes that the judge had to say. 
We are confronted with a lawsuit that should never have been filed, which was completely frivolous, both factually and legally, and which was brought in bad faith for an improper purpose. Mr. Trump is a prolific and sophisticated litigant who is repeatedly using the court to seek revenge on political adversaries. He is the mastermind of strategic abuse of the judicial process, and he cannot be seen as a litigant blindly following the advice of his lawyer. He knew full well the impact of his actions. As such, I find that sanctions should be imposed upon Mr. Trump and his lead counsel, Ms. Hoppe. Furthermore, I find that the pleadings here were abusive litigation tactics, meaning filing a RICO lawsuit against Hillary Clinton. The complaint and amended complaint were drafted to advance a political narrative, not to address legal harm caused by any defendant. The 819 paragraphs of the 186-page amended complaint are filled with immaterial, conclusory facts not connected to any particular cause of action. Consider the incendiary charge that Mr. Comey, the director of the FBI, conspired with Ms. Clinton to maliciously prosecute him. He was never prosecuted by the Justice Department. The FBI investigated the case because they thought there could have been a tie to Russia. They found that there wasn't and they didn't prosecute him criminally. OK, just because you like Putin or you say nice things about him doesn't mean that you're a criminal. That's not how the law works. So I got the same thing to say to the left. Uh, political hacks that I have to say to the right wing political hacks. The law is not there to be used for your benefit. It is there to protect people from actual harm and damages that are adjudicated by a judge. And if the judge determines that there are no damages, then there are no damages. As for Trump's case here, people thinking that you were working secretly with Putin, that's called their opinion. I thought you were an advocate of the First Amendment. People believed wrong things about you. OK, and that's all that happened here. They did not maliciously conspiratorially tried to destroy you. They actually believed that you were working with Putin to somehow uh, rig the election. They had a wrong idea about you. That is not defamation. That is certainly not grounds for a RICO suit. OK, they believed in a conspiracy theory like you believe in lots of conspiracy theories. You can't sue them for that. OK, if the conspiracy theory rises to a level where it harms people like Alex Jones's conspiracies, then you can sue. OK, but these ideas that people had about you working with Putin, those were their opinions, you know, protected by the First Amendment. You can't bring a RICO suit because they had an opinion about you that was incorrect. So the bottom line is that Trump's claims of a conspiracy between all these people is not backed up by any evidence. People had wrong opinions about you and, and insulting opinions about you. You can't sue based on that. OK, that does not rise to the level of a RICO violation, which is what he tried to file. So as always, they went above and beyond what is reality and tried to um, claim some vast conspiracy between all these people. They just didn't like you and they didn't like Putin. And they came up with a story to demonize both of you. That's called their opinion. Wrong as it may be, it's still their opinion and you can't sue them for that. OK, I never agreed with it. I never supported it. But nevertheless, it's not defamation. If it is, I would be supporting Trump. But the law is squarely on the side of the uh, defendants here, Hillary Clinton and the rest of them. OK, I do not like any of these people. I'm not a fan of any of these politicians. I don't like Robbie Mook or Fusion GPS or any of these people or Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. I'll be completely honest with you. I don't give a damn about none of you. But nevertheless, I'm being fair about the law. OK, that's all I do on my channel, which is present the accurate legal facts for you guys. And the judge's decision here was correct. Now, Haba is going to try to appeal this decision and she will lose because the judge has already ruled that the lawsuit was frivolous. That gives him grounds to award sanctions. OK, that gives the defendants the grounds to ask the judge for sanctions. And the judge rightly granted them because it was a frivolous lawsuit. They wasted everybody's money here. And that is why the judge has awarded the defendants who are financially harmed here with all this money. And by the way, Donald Trump was asking for $72 million in damages from the defendants in the original complaint. And in the end, he's the one who's ended up paying uh, about a million dollars. So th this is nothing but hilarious. Despite the fact that I never agreed with the Russiagate stuff, it's still great to see Donald Trump having to pay because as always, he comes up with some kind of lunatic conspiracy theory that's even worse than the Russiagate conspiracy theory. OK, so this is nothing but hilarious to me. I love to see all these people suffer uh, financially, and uh, I would love to see Donald Trump in prison for what he actually did on January 6th. I want you to do your job and arrest that piece of trash right now. 
And that is the bottom line. And that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell and press all for future videos so that YouTube notifies you. And if you want to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. And you can also join channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button. Your support is much appreciated and needed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys all in my next video. Peace.